So the folks at Ice Whale recently reached out to me to ask me if I'd like to test out the ZimaCube Personal Cloud. Now for full disclosure, Ice Whale did send me the ZimaCube Personal Cloud at no cost. However, Ice Whale does not get to approve or view the video before I post it. And they do not tell me what I can or cannot say. Now I love having a good NAS solution. Having a NAS is really valuable, especially if you have a lot of pictures and videos like I do. It's a great way to store those files. In addition, a NAS is often a great option if you want to run a home media server. There are Plex and other options out there that a lot of people use NASes for. Now, in my case, I use a NAS for all of my video storage. I have tons and tons of videos, many, many terabytes. And a computer tower like this, it quickly runs out of room to put the disk drives that you need to put in there, like these right here. For instance, this one is 20 terabytes which is great, but eventually you run out of disk bays in there. That's where a NAS can be a really affordable and great option for storing, managing, and accessing those files. So first of all, let's get started on unboxing, and I'll show you what's included with the ZimaCube Personal Cloud. All right, so first of all, we have a, we've got a giant box here, and inside we've got a tray of accessories here. So we've got a Thunderbolt 4 cable right here. In addition, we've also got an Ethernet cable right here to plug the ZimbaQ Personal into your router. That way it's network connected and you can either use it on your same network or you can access it remotely as well. And then we've also got a box in here that says ZimbaQ Parts. So I'm going to open that up and see what's inside. So it looks like inside here we have the big power brick to power the cube. And then we've also got some bags here of screws. And then finally inside here, got the actual Zima Cube NAS. So I like the packaging that this comes with. Very nice packaging. So I'm going to lift up the lid here and we've got this big square metal box and it's got pretty good heft to it. I like that solid feel. All right. I love pulling this material off. So I'm going to do that here on camera so you can experience the joy as well. Got this on all sides. Let me turn it so you can see this side as well. Oh yes, and we also have instructions here. So this looks like a quick start guide. Gonna be going through this as we go through the steps. So this is what the actual Zima cube looks like. So this would be the front of it right here. So on the back, we've got quite a few additional ports. We've got several USB. We've got a display port, HDMI, two network ports, and then we've got the power port right over here. And then on the front here, we have two USB ports and we have that USB-C slash Thunderbolt port. So lots and lots of ports on here. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to install some hard drives in here. So I'm going to change our camera angle a little bit so you can see how to do that. And then we're going to power it on and dive into this. So in order to install drives in here, all we have to do is lift this piece off and all six drive bays are underneath here. So to lift this, we just need to push down slightly on it, compress it a little, and then it's going to lift right off. And so under here, here are six drive bays. And then we also have this seventh bay over here. And the seventh bay right here is for M.2 drives. So if you're using any M.2s, you can put them easily in here. If you're using three and a half inch rotational drives or two and a half inch SSDs, they would go in here. So I've got two 20 terabyte Western digital drives, and I'm going to install both of them in here. So the nice thing is this is a toolless design. You can just pop it up like that and the bay is going to pull out. And when installing your drive, you want to have it face up and you want to have the top of the drive back against this. And then what you're going to do is you're going to install screws in this hole and this hole. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side as well. So I'm going to grab my Phillips head screwdriver that came with this and I'm going to grab those screw bags that came with this as well. And the screws you'll want to use are these ones right here. They're the ones that are a little bit thicker. These are going to be the ones that hold in the drive. And you just want to make sure to line up the screw holes. When you have it lined up, you'll see it right there through the, through the bay. And we're just going to tighten those in. And we're going to turn it around and we're going to get the other side as well. And then after it's screwed in on all four sides, you're just going to put it back down in here. So you're just going to make sure this part lines up here and you're going to pop it down in and you're going to lock it. So I'm going to repeat the process with my second drive. We're going to put it in the same way with the top of the drive facing upward and the upper side right here. 
Then we're gonna put in four more screws. Something I noticed about the screwdriver is it is magnetized, which is very nice. I had a screw almost fall out down into there and having magnetic screwdriver is very handy for that. All right, and then with drive number two, we're gonna do the same thing, slide it down in and we're gonna latch it back in place. And those are the only two drives I have to add right now. So we're gonna pop this panel back on just like that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get the power cord plugged in so we can plug it in and power it on. So the power cord is a pretty good size brick. I've seen bigger, but this one is uh, pretty big. Reminds me of some of those power bricks for uh, high-end laptops. So we're just gonna hook in the cable here. And based on where I'm gonna hook this up in my desk, I'm gonna need the full power cord length. So I'm gonna undo all the twist ties here. We're gonna plug the power in right here in this port. And I think I'm gonna hook up the ethernet cable as well while we're here. And I like to use this port right here next to the power port, but they are both 2.5 gigabit ethernet speeds. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go plug this in and we're gonna get started. So after we power it on, we're gonna see that single amber light right there on the front of it. And in the back, the ethernet cable is gonna be showing activity lights. And I've got the other end connected to my router right here. So we do have a connection on the network. And I'm gonna go over to my PC desktop and I'm gonna finish the final configuration and walk you through that. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna to go to findzima.com. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna offer us the client install. So in my case, I'm running Windows on this PC. So I'm going to download the Windows client. And if you have Mac OS, it's fully compatible there. And there is going to be a mobile client coming soon. I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, that opens up a lot of possibilities. So the client has finished downloading, going to run the setup for that. Hopefully it's gonna detect our Zima Cube personal cloud on the network once it's done installing. And we see this initializing box. All right, so it has found the Zima Cube. I'm gonna click connect and I'm going to click allow, accept the privacy policy, click to the next screen. And I'm going to create a local account. I've created my local account. I'm gonna to proceed to the next step. So here it gives you a little preview of some of the features of this. I'm going to uh, go to the dashboard right here. And the dashboard is very nice. Uh, it talks about the two drives right here. It shows us the two drives we just installed. And it shows us the system usage for the CPU and the RAM. Which, by the way, the ZMQ Personal does have eight gigabytes of RAM in there. And of course, there are some apps you can install on here. Uh, Plex is one of them that's featured. And then you can go to the app store here and there are a bunch of apps you can install on this. So I'm not gonna go through all of those, but there are a bunch of very, very useful apps here. I see some of them that stand out to me right away. So it's nice to have that feature of all of these apps that you can run on here, which the Zima Cube does have its own OS. It's called Zima OS. You can see that heading up here. And that is the operating system that runs on the Zima Cube. So what I want to do right now, now that we have our two drives in there, is I wanna click Manage. And what I wanna do is I wanna click here where it says to discover the new hard drive. So what I'm doing first is I'm enabling the new hard drive. And currently one of these drives, I do have some data on it. So I don't wanna do the format until I've checked that data just to make sure everything's good there. But the nice thing is with the storage, it does show the total that's available. So currently I don't have these drives in RAID. They're not in any type of RAID array. They're just independently being used. And I have 620 gigs on one and 410 on the other. So if you click on the folder right here, you can actually view the files, which that one drive, that drive is empty. It's just some log data and some DAT data. But the other drive, if you click on the folder there, this does have a little bit of data on it. And the funny thing is, is the one piece of data that takes up 620 gigabytes is a meteor shower time lapse that I did. And that folder is huge, but I do have that folder backed up elsewhere. And in order to make sure these have maximum compatibility, I do want to do a format here. So I'm going to format it. And what it's going to do is it's going to fully erase the drive, but it's going to format it to make sure it has max compatibility with the Zima cube. So I'm gonna click create and it is going to format that drive. So we wanna wait, the formatting can take a little bit of time and we have success there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna format the other one. So I'm just gonna go through some of the settings here and I'm gonna select my time zone, get some of that set up. You can also configure a search engine on there if you want to, DuckDuckGo is the default. I'm fine leaving that. 
And then you can also configure the news feed and the power LED. I'm going to leave both of those alone. And if you want to share folders, you can create an account for other members to access specific shared folders. So if there's any data you want to share as part of a team, you can easily do that on here. And then there is the enable SSH access. So if you want a more secure way to log in via SSH, you can do that as well. I'm going to leave that alone for now. And there are remote login settings that you can configure up there as well. I do recommend doing that if you want to access the Zima cube anytime you're away from home. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to update the actual Zima OS because there are some new features and improvements and some of them I want to show you here. So I'm going to click update now and it's going to show us our progress status bar here and we're going to let it do the update and then I'm going to copy some files to this so you can see how quickly those files copy as well as how to do it. So the device is restarting now. All right, so it is reloading right now. I'm going to log in there and I'm going to open the dashboard. It's just highlighting what type of updates were completed there. And so what I want to do is I want to go here to storage and I want to click on that. And what I want to do is I want to combine the disk using RAID because I want there to be parity there. So I'm going to disable this disk first and then I'm going to disable this one as well. And then what I'm going to click next is I'm going to go to combine hard drive space using RAID and I'm going to click create. And so because I only have two disks in there right now, I have a couple options here. You can highlight the question mark next to these so you can see what those options are. Now, for the two options that are available with two disk, I do recommend doing RAID 1 if you value that data. So if that data is irreplaceable and you would not want to do expensive data recovery, or anything like that. RAID 1 is the best to do because it does duplicate identical data. So the data goes to both drives and it's identical. So if one of those drives fails, your data is going to be on the other drive. But if you do RAID 0, that's not going to happen because it's going to evenly distribute that data across two or more drives. Now RAID 0 is a lot faster, so the speed is going to be much quicker. But if one of the drives fails, you're going to lose all of your data. So if the data is worth a lot to you, do RAID 1. If the data is not and you'd rather have super fast speeds, do RAID 0. In my case, I'm going to pick RAID 1. Now, RAID 5 is great if you have more than three disks in there. And RAID 5, what it does is it distributes the data across multiple drives, but it also uses parity for redundancy. So basically, RAID 5 is the best of both worlds with RAID 0 and RAID 1. I'm going to select RAID 1 and I'm going to click Next. And let's give our RAID array a name. I'm going to call this RAID 1 storage. I'm going to click I understand the warning and I'm going to click create. So looks like it does not want any spaces or if we have spaces we need to use an underscore. So I'm going to do that right there and I'm going to click create. Our RAID array is creating right now and you can see the CPU and RAM usage in the background. Again very low, nothing heavy at all. We're going to look at those again when we're copying data because I like to monitor that since the personal cloud is the entry level Zima cube and it does have an N100 CPU in there which is not a high-end CPU but with a NAS you really don't need a high-end CPU. If you're using this even as a media server you really don't need a lot of CPU power there or RAM. Zima cube does offer higher end NAS options so those may be options you want to look at if you're doing anything that's going to really tax that CPU. If you're doing any type of processing on the NAS then you might want a higher end one but the N100 should be more than capable for the NAS storage that I'm going to use it for. So next, let's do an upload test. So what I want to do is I want to upload a folder. I'm going to take that folder, I'm going to drag and drop it here. The folder is 141 gigabytes. It's got a lot of individual photos in there, and it's got the raw ones I started off with, and then it's got the finished products. But as you can see, we've got a nice status bar here. It shows the speeds that they're uploading, and then it's got the uploading right here. So we're getting about 110 megabytes per second, which is about right because my current router is limited to one gigabit per second for the speeds. So this speed is going to be about one eighth of that. So because of my network, it's maxed out at that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the Zima cube accessible via the Windows Explorer because I want to be able to access it that way and not always have to go through the web portal. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to add network location. We're going to click next. And then for the network address, basically what you're going to, going to do is you're going to use this format right here. 
So first of all, you're gonna use the IP address that it shows you. In my case, it's 10.0.0.27. And then what you're going to do after that is you're going to put another backslash. You're going to do backslash, backslash, the IP address. And then next, you're going to do the name of your storage. So if you have separate drives, you would have to do that for each drive. But if you have a RAID array like I do, you're just going to put in the name of the RAID array. In my case, it's RAID1 underscore storage. You're going to click next. And then we can type a name for this location. So I'm going to put Zima Cube personal cloud. That's how I want it to show in Windows. I'm going to click next and I'm going to click open this network location when I finish. And then what we have right there is we have our network share. So right now the file on there, of course, is the Insta360 Ace Pro time lapse folder that I copied over. So let's say I want to copy another folder over there. In this case, I want to copy a sunset I filmed on the Osmo Pocket 3. So all I have to do now is just copy that folder and then right click in this one in Windows Explorer and click paste. And it's going to copy it directly to that. You don't have to go through the web portal. Now, of course, this is still going to max out at about 113 megabytes per second. And that, again, is because of the limitations of my router. So I've tried out several different NASs before in varying prices and features, functionality. And what I like about the Zima Cube Personal Cloud is first of all, it's a great value for what you get. And I find it to be very simple to use. It's great for entry level or intermediate file management. And it's also got a lot of features like I mentioned, Plex, and a bunch of other apps you can set up on here if you want to do that as well. So if you want to take this beyond that typical NAS file storage and want to use it as a home media center, it's great for that as well. And this NAS does have a lot of features that make it one that can grow with you. So I only use two of the drive bays in there, but I already have 40 terabytes of space or 20 terabytes when in RAID. There are four additional drive bays as well as that NVMe drive bay. There's a lot of future expandability and this officially goes up to 164 terabytes of storage. That's how much is officially supported. So there is lots of room to grow there which is good because I'm going to need to add more drives as time goes on. So I've dropped a link to the Zima Cube personal cloud in the description below if you'd like to check it out and see if this NAS is right for you.